so we're going to do this wine over the city tutorial um, I'm going to paint on a smaller canvas so that uh, it's a quicker video so if you're downloading it it doesn't take up a lot of room um, the other thing is you can always pause and I encourage you to do so when we're working on a section if you want to pause and finish that section it's really easy to do that and then pick up where you left off later okay so this is the actual finished product of our wine over the city painting um, this is just meant to be kind of a sunset in the background we've got some buildings here and obviously we've got our wine glass we've got some little reflections down here those reflections are from the uh, the sky behind the buildings and also you'll see there's a little bit of blue in here that's just a reflection from the little bit of outlining that we're going to be doing on our buildings okay all right so we're going to go ahead and get started i encourage you to read the first uh, few helpful hints before you get started it'll just tell you things like that you know you want to rinse your brushes out every time you um, use them and uh, dry your brushes off with paper towel or paint rag or something just to make sure you keep those um, nice and clean, but also you don't wanna have water in them, okay? So I'm just gonna use this old pink cup here. I'm gonna put my brushes in. I've just got some paper towels that I'll be using to wipe my brushes off. I'm gonna do this painting probably a little bit different than the instructions, simply because when we're teaching it and you've got a video or if we're teaching it in a class, we may show you a few extra things, things that would be really hard to communicate if we were trying to tell you um, through actual written instructions, but that can be communicated to you if you are actually watching us demonstrate it, okay? So there may be a few things on here that if you were looking at the instructions that may be a little bit different, but you are gonna get to the same uh, end product whichever way you go, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna put these this right down here, and I'm going to take my big brush out first. I'm gonna take it out of the water. Make sure you dry your brushes off every time you take them out of the water. That keeps them nice and soft and nice and clean. Uh, but again, we don't want to get water in our paint. If you get a little water in there, it's okay. Just dab the water off with your uh, paper towel or paint rag or whatever it is that you're using. Um, but you know, just as a general rule, we don't want to get water in our paint, okay? So for this background, notice we've got some really cool sunset colors in this background. You know, you could honestly start with a mixture of yellow and white or orange and white or red and white because we're going to be blending all these colors together in the sky here. But I'm actually going to start with orange and white. I just prefer starting with the orange and white here. You may have a moon up in here on your canvas. If you do, you can absolutely kind of dodge that moon a little bit just so that it's a placeholder and you know later on where the moon's going to go. But you don't really need to try to save that moon because we're actually going to do the moon later on with our fingers, okay? So I'm going to take my big brush and I'm going to pick up two nice big scoops of white. Now, when I say a scoop, this is what a scoop is. Don't do a little dainty little bit. I'm gonna pick up two big scoops of white. Now, ideally, you'll be mixing this on um, your plate that we enclosed or something like that. Um, a paper plate is really, really nice to mix your colors on. Or if you've got a plastic plate, you can rinse off, that's fine too. But I'm gonna pick up two nice big scoops of white. You don't need to rinse your brush in between, but I'm also gonna pick up two nice big scoops of orange. Gonna put them on top of each other. When you mix colors, and that's what I'm doing here, I'm just mixing these two colors together. Don't worry about trying to mix and mix and mix and get it just completely mixed together. It's actually fine, um, and, actually, and actually I prefer to have a little bit of my orange still showing, a little bit of the white still showing. It helps with the blending process later on, okay? So again, don't worry about just blending, or, or sorry, not blending, but mixing this a lot. Mix it two or three times and then you'll pick your brush up. It'll have a little bit of orange on it, a little bit of white on it, and that's totally fine, okay? So I'm gonna start painting my background here. And I'm gonna try to keep my arm out of this as much as possible, but it's kind of difficult with the setup we've got going on here. But I'm gonna start doing nice, long, soft paint strokes here in my background with this orange and white mixture, okay? So go ahead and start doing that. As you're doing that, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about blending, okay? When you're blending, and notice I'm just doing nice, long, soft paint strokes, not trying to do anything really perfect. I wanna make sure I'm getting good coverage on my canvas though. I don't want it to look like that. You know, I, don't, I want it to have pretty full coverage on it. So I'm gonna keep going here. 
The most important thing you need to know about blending is you cannot blend into dry paint, okay? Now, because of that, I'm not gonna go all the way down to the bottom here, down into these areas just yet. I'm gonna paint about, about halfway down here. I tell you what, we'll paint to the top of our glass. Notice I'm running into the glass, that's totally fine. Notice I'm running into the pencil marks for the buildings, that's totally fine too because later on, you're gonna cover those pencil marks up anyway, okay? But for the most part, I'm just doing nice, long, soft, back and forth strokes like this. Now, even if you're not at the point where you're ready to begin blending, I want you to stop and take a look or either pause the video until you get about down to the wine glass here. But I wanna show you how to do some blending. Now, this blending, this is what you'll be doing for the whole background of your canvas here. So the whole sky is gonna be just a series of blended strokes. The colors we're gonna to use to make our sunset are going to be yellow, orange, and red, okay? Now the red obviously is gonna have a little pink tone to it. We'll use that color as we get more down into this area. We'll, we'll start adding that um, red in. But again, we can't let the paint dry or it's not gonna blend. I can already see some of this up here drying a little bit. So I'm gonna go on and put just a little more of this orange and white mixture here. And by the way, if you run out of paint, just mix it again. Doesn't matter if it's exactly the same color, but it's about half white, half orange, okay? So while this paint is still wet, notice I'm still not gonna rinse my brush yet. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white and really softly blend it in like this. Now you notice I'm not blending it so much that all that white goes away. I wanna see a little bit of that white in there. And I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of yellow. A little bit of yellow goes a really long way. So even though that doesn't look like a lot of yellow, I'm gonna kind of dab it off on my table a little bit, just so there's not too much in there. Okay, so I can add some yellow. I can add some white. And again, just little amounts. You don't wanna overdo it. So I can add a little bit of white in here, add a little bit of yellow in here. I can add some orange as well. So notice that really pretty orange color. When it's blended in with the orange and white, it looks really, really nice. Hopefully you can see that. Um, but I'll just keep doing that. I'll just keep blending um, in a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange. Now, as we get down towards the bottom section here, uh, like I said before, I am going to start blending a little bit of my red in there, okay? But just like before, we do want to start off with our, and I love blending. These are some of my favorite colors to blend, so you have to stop me here because I'll keep blending all day long. Um, but when we get down to this area, and again, you can stop the video at this point if you want, just so you can work on this blending. But when we get down to this area down in here, I'm just gonna come in real quickly and add some of this orange and white mixture from down in here. Don't worry if you run into the buildings. I would much rather you run into the buildings then you know try to avoid them so much that you end up with a big aura around them you can still see the pencil mark so notice right here i can still see that pencil mark there so it's totally fine but i'm going to run all the way up to my buildings all the way up to my glass and i can blend a little bit of white down in here which i will do again nice long soft back and forth strokes here it's kind of hard the angle i'm painting at here um, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of red. Now, a little bit of red goes a long way. So I wanna wipe that red off, just kinda dab it off on my table, or for you guys, you'll do that on your plate. And then I'm gonna come in and just softly add some of this red. Now, you see what I said before, a little bit of red goes a long way. I might have even picked up too much red there. Um, if you do that, no big deal. You can kinda just really softly spread it out. The key to good blending, besides the fact that you do have to do it while your paint is wet, is you wanna do it softly, okay? We don't wanna come in and attack this. We wanna do nice, long, soft paint strokes, okay? So I, uh, I'll keep going over here. And by the way, you can add some more of that orange and white if you want to. The orange and white mixture we did before, if you need to add a little bit of that in order to, you know, if you wanna cover up some of that red, you could. But again, I don't want you to worry at all about the fact that you're probably running into your buildings, I'm doing that as well, okay? So do not worry in the least that you're running into your buildings. 
Now I have a tendency to over blend and watch as I do that again. I'm gonna keep going on this when I should stop. I should probably stop now. I mean, I've got a nice blend going on here. I've got some of this nice lighter color in the top. So I've got some white, I've got some yellow, um, added some orange. And then like I said, now as we get down towards the buildings, I wanna add a little bit of that red in. If you need to, you can always switch to your medium brush to do the little areas kind of in between the buildings. But again, notice how I'm running into the buildings there. That's totally fine. So if you'd like to switch to a smaller brush, you can, but it's really, really not necessary, okay? All right, so take your time on that. If you need to pause the video, now's a good time to do that to finish this sky. You also wanna paint the sides of your canvas. So whenever you're painting, wrap around the side whatever colors you used on the front, just kind of wrap those around the side like this. It just makes it look a little more complete later on, okay? So again, go ahead and finish your sky. If you wanna pause the video, now is a good time to do that so you can finish your sky. Okay, now that we've got our sky done, we're going to do the little area on the inside of the glass. So all this right in here, this is actually, we're seeing the sunset through the glass. So we're going to paint these little areas here. Switch to your medium brush. The medium brush is just the smaller of the two flat brushes. So just switch to that brush, make sure you dry it off first. And just really, really soft strokes here. I'm gonna come in and add some of the orange and white mixture we were using from before. Again, don't worry if you run into those buildings. You can still see the pencil mark here. Um, if you've gone in a little heavy with your paint like this and you can't see the pencil mark as well, if you just kind of spread the paint out really, really soft, just barely touch your canvas like you're petting a kitten. I made mine a little wide there. You can even take your finger like this, softly rub that in, and now I can see the pencil mark again, okay? Now, I don't need to see the pencil mark really, really well. I just wanna see it just enough so that later on, I will know where the pencil mark is so that I'll know where my lines are gonna go, my outlines, okay? Now, I could pick up a little bit of white with that medium brush, just a tiny bit, because this is a really little area. So I could make it a little lighter like that if I wanted, or I could add a tiny bit of red. Now. The amount of red I've got on here is going to be way, way, way too much. So what I'm gonna do is wipe my brush off on the table a few times or on your uh, plate, whatever you're using here, and just add a teeny, teeny, tiny dot of that red. And what I like to do is take my fingers and blend this, because you're in such a small area there, it's just a little harder to blend with your brush, okay? Now, even though that looks different than the sky, um, it's not gonna matter, I mean, it's, it's pretty different from the sky, but later on, we're gonna come in and we're gonna add our outlining, so that's not gonna matter, okay? And I'll add just a tiny bit, well, that's too much, just a tiny bit of orange up into here. Wipe a little bit off. And again, I'm just using my finger to blend this in. I like to blend with my fingers just because you get a lot more um, control over it. But when you're blending with your fingers, just be really, really careful not to bear down on the canvas. You don't want to, Gosh, I keep forgetting I've got paint on there. But you don't want to um, really bear down on the canvas because you start to pull paint off the canvas. What you want to do is make sure that you're always just going really, really soft, barely touching that canvas, okay? And I could edit this out because I messed that area up, but I'm not going to because I want you to see that later on, stuff like that's not going to matter. Once we get our outlining in, not going to matter a bit. Okay, now this area down in here, later on, that's also going to be the color of the, uh, the sky, because the sky is kind of, I mean, it, obviously we want to have it look like we've got wine in here, but the sky is kind of casting a reflection on our wine. So later on, the, the wine here will be this color, but we're not going to do that right now, okay? We're gonna leave this, this little area, I just did this too. We're gonna leave that until later. That way, when we do our black here, if we run into this area, it won't matter because later on, we're gonna be coming back in and painting this on top of it, okay? And speaking of that, if you ever accidentally paint a section you didn't mean to or anything like that, don't worry about it, it's totally fine. If you were to accidentally paint this, for example, this is actually your greenery. If you were to paint that with this color or drip paint on it, 
doesn't matter. Later on when we do this section, we're going to totally cover that up, okay? So if you need to pause while you're doing the area on the inside of the glass, you can. And again, that's just where we're seeing the sunset through our wine glass. Remember, if you ha are having trouble seeing those pencil marks, just take your finger really, really softly go over that, okay? All right, and again, pause if you need to. I am going to go ahead and start painting some of these black areas. Now, this area down here, even though it doesn't look black, it's gonna start out black. We wanna paint that area first so it has time to dry so we can come in and put the reflection on it, okay? So I'm gonna use my big brush, so I'll put my medium brush back into the water, take my big brush out here, I'm gonna wipe that off, and then I'm gonna paint this bottom section black. You'll notice that I'm using an easel here. I usually don't use an easel, honestly. If I'm painting just for pleasure, I usually don't use an easel. I just lean the canvas on the table. It's just hard to video when you're doing that, which is why I'm doing it this way. Notice I'm going all the way up to the glass here. I'm gonna just kind of run down that line right there. Don't worry if you run into the greenery some, it's fine. So I'm just gonna do a real quick coat of black down here. And again, I'm just using my big brush. Don't worry about trying to make it a thick coat because again, you want it to be able to dry. So don't make it a thick coat. You're gonna cover up a lot of that. I mean, all, almost all of it actually. You're gonna cover a lot of that up in a few minutes anyway. So don't do a real thick coat of black on that. Make sure you get all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. When you're doing black, if you don't get all the way down to the bottom, it's just really noticeable later on. You don't want that. So you can pick your canvas up and, and paint the bottom of it down there. Just make sure you paint all the way to the bottom, okay? And again, this is one of those points if you need to pause the video, you can. We just try to make the videos as short as possible. So like I said, you could download them if you wanted to and it wouldn't take up so much room. After you're done with this area down here and take your time, we're gonna paint all of our buildings black, okay? Now there's a little bit of building kind of showing in here, we wanna paint that black too. Uh, but this is a really good place to pause if you're not done with this area down here. It's a really good place to pause so that uh, when you pick back up with me, you can start painting the buildings. So, now, you can use your medium brush on these buildings if you want. I'm just gonna use my big brush just because I know if I run out of lines a little bit, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna use my big brush on the larger areas here. I'll fill in with my medium brush you know, when I get kind of to some of those closer areas, I'll go back in and fill in with my medium brush. Don't worry if you accidentally paint something you're not supposed to paint. I'm just gonna paint all the little building areas here. This area right in here and right in here, remember, that's going to be black as well. We're seeing a little bit of the tops of those buildings behind our wine glass, okay? So I'm just gonna paint the big areas with my big brush. Like I said, I'll come back in a minute and just kind of touch up, fill in, with my medium brush. And by the way, don't worry if you, you know, alter the shape of some of these buildings. If you, you know, accidentally go outside the building, just make it a little bigger. It does not matter because these are not actually the buildings that you're going to see if you're looking uh, in Midtown. We're just, we put some buildings in here just to kind of be representative of that, okay? So don't worry at all about trying to get those building shapes exactly like they are in the original. All right, now I'm gonna come back though with my medium brush and come in and uh, get a little closer here. If you hold your medium brush more like you would a pen or a pencil, so kind of down here, you can get a much better line. Now you don't need to worry about getting a real perfect line or anything, it's not gonna matter later on, but if you wanted to get a little better line, if you just kind of, again, hold your brush like you would a pen or a pencil, and if you lay the canvas flat like this, you can even kind of lean on the canvas as long as it's dry wherever you're leaning. And then you get a nice sharp line. Now don't worry if your lines are not really, really sharp because when we come back in in a few minutes and do our outlining, we are going to absolutely take care of that. We're gonna do some haphazard outlining on here so it's not gonna matter if you've got really sharp lines or not. See how I'm running into my glass a little bit? And that is why I was telling you earlier that we're going to let, um, we're going to let this sit. We'll come back and do that later. The reason we're doing the black and then we'll do this color on top of it later 
is to let, um, let us come in here right next to this glass and know that if we run into it, we're gonna go back over the glass later on anyway with our wine color, so it's not gonna matter a bit, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna keep painting my buildings here. After you paint your buildings, you're going to take a little break, just long enough to kind of rinse those brushes, get clean water. You don't need a really long break. And by the way, I'm, I'm painting a smaller canvas, so I might have to come in at some of these little edges and touch up with my small brush, since my medium brush might be a little too big on this smaller canvas I'm using here. Don't worry, again, if you're running into those uh, the greenery down here, like the trees and shrubs. Don't worry about that at all. Later on, I'm gonna show you a little trick, um, the way I like to do shrubbery and, and trees. Um, I'll show you a little trick for that later on. Again, it's really hard for me to paint without sticking my head all in the uh, front of the camera here, so my lines are getting kind of wonky here, but don't worry about that. And again, later on, we'll come in and do some nice outlining around here. So if your edges aren't real sharp on these buildings, promise you, not gonna matter in a few minutes. Because once we come in and add all of our uh, little outlining and all that good stuff, uh, you're not even gonna be able to notice it, okay? I think I might be missing a little bit of a building here, but I can't tell. Hmm, am I missing a building? Possibly. All right, I'm just gonna leave that. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in some of these smaller areas with my small brush, just because I'm doing this smaller canvas, so it's a little harder to get into those smaller areas with my flat brushes. So I'm just gonna to switch to my small brush here, get some of these little areas. And again, don't worry about changing the shape of your building some, that's totally fine. You'll see I'm kind of playing around with the shape of that building. Go back in, fill that black in a little bit here. And remember, don't worry at all if you have run into the bushes a little bit or the trees down here like I have. Not gonna matter later. Remember, we are gonna put some outlining around this later on so that we can get some nice definition on these buildings, so the wine glass, on the the greenery, everything down here pretty much is gonna get some outlining so that we can get some defining lines, okay? All right, so it looks like I still need to do the area right in here, so I'll do that. Now in a minute, you're going to, after you're, do, you're done with this area, in a minute you're going to be able to go rinse your brushes and get clean water. When you get clean water, you don't need a ton of clean water, um, just enough basically to cover the bristles on your brushes, so you don't need to get a ton. I say that because we try not to let people get too much water when they're here in the studio. Um, then if you spill it, you're sitting in it for the rest of the night, so that's no good. All right, so I think, I'll, I'll take a quick glance at it, but I think I'm pretty good as far as having my buildings painted in. This area right in here is bothering me, so I'm gonna fix that up just a little bit. I'm gonna make that a little smaller. Remember to take that black around the side, and I'm gonna come in and just add a line here. But again, take that black around the side. Remember, anything goes to the edge, take it around the sides. So just take your you know, your big or your medium brush or whatever, and just brush around the sides there, okay? All right, now, this is a good point at, um, at which to uh, pause the video, finish up all of the black. Don't forget to wrap it around the side, like we said. So, um, but this is a really good point to pause the video. I'm not going to pause this one. I'm just gonna keep going. I think my phone battery's about dead, um, but I'm not gonna pause this. I'm gonna keep going, but I want you guys to pause it here so you have plenty of time to finish up those buildings and also um, to rinse those brushes, get clean water. So the first thing I want to do here is I'm gonna take my I'll take my big brush out. I'm gonna rinse it off and dry it off. Now I am going to mix yellow and white. So we're going to do the moon next. 
The moon is uh, going to be yellow, obviously, but yellow, just straight yellow, the yellow is really, really thin. So if we don't add a little bit of white to it, it just doesn't look good. So what we're gonna do is add a little bit of white to our yellow here. So I'm gonna take my big brush, I've rinsed it off, I've dried it off. I'm gonna pick up a nice big scoop of white, okay? And then a scoop of yellow that's about half that big, okay? And I'm gonna mix those two colors together. Now, even though I'm using half as much yellow as I am white, check it out, still quite yellow, all right? So again, half a scoop of yellow and a scoop of white. I'm gonna put my brush back in my water for now. And I'm gonna take my finger. The easiest way in the world to do a circle is with your finger, okay? The paint does come off, like two, three weeks, totally gone, never know it's there. Actually, I'm kidding, it comes off right away, obviously. But I'm gonna take, I'm picking this up so you can see it a little better, but I'm gonna take my finger, I'm gonna put a little bit of that yellow and white mixture on it, and I'm just gonna choose a spot up in here and really slowly and softly, I'm just gonna go round and round here to make my moon. Now you'll notice on the outside of my moon, how as the paint starts to run out, it gives me like a, a, there's not a really defined edge on the side of the moon. That is perfect. That makes it look like, you know, it's not, you've got a little bit of um, a glow around the moon, okay? So you don't need to worry about that. So I'm just using my finger for that. And then we want to do a little glow or a little reflection, sorry, on our water down here from the, um, the moon as well. And what we're going to do is use our medium brush to come in and do this sort of thing right here, okay? So I just need to take my medium brush out, rinse it off, dry it off. If you guys need to pause here to do the moon, you can. Don't overthink that moon. Again, you're mixing a big scoop of white, half a scoop of yellow, and use your finger to do the moon. When we do this area down in here, there's several different ways you could do the reflection. You don't wanna to have too much paint on your brush though because you wanna be able to see some of this black, just like we can see here. You wanna be real soft with this. So you don't want to have too much paint on. So what I'm gonna do is pick up with my medium brush, and remember the medium brush is the smaller of the two flat brushes. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this yellow and white mixture, and then I'm gonna wipe it off on my paper until there's only a little bit left on there, okay? And I am gonna pick this up just so that I can um, show you a little better here. I'm gonna have my yellow be kind of this, this area. I don't wanna come in and do this. I don't wanna have a, you know, just a perfect little rectangle of yellow, okay? Don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do is come in really, really softly here, just barely touching my canvas. You just kind of go back and forth like this until I've got a little bit of a reflection down in this area, okay? And I'm just gonna let that just end on the sides just however it wants to. Take it all the way to the bottom. So if you are using an easel, make sure you pick it up. It's just real soft here. Notice again, I can still see some of my black. Notice I can also see those little lines that I drew there, but I just did that again so you could see. You don't want to try to do it really. You don't want to try to square it off or anything. You want it to just kind of disappear out into the black, okay? Now, I like to do a lot of moon reflection on something like this just because I really like that yellow against the black. We'll come back in a few minutes. We'll do a little, a little bit of a reddish orange mixture down here. We'll also do a little bit of uh, blue down here. But for right now, um, I'm good with my yellow. So you guys just kind of play around with that. If you get too much yellow, like if you go all out in the, into this area with yellow, don't worry about that. When we come back in a few minutes, you can cover that up, okay? So this area right here, pretend that never happened. So I'm just showing you again, if you go too far, it doesn't matter. We're gonna come back in a few minutes, put some other colors in there. So you're gonna be totally fine on that. Okay, all right, now, next thing we're going to do is our wine glass. And again, please, please, if you need to, absolutely um, pause your, uh, the video so that you can catch up, okay? So please, you know, don't hesitate to pause it so you can catch up here, all right? Now, when I'm doing this area in here, 
If you run into the black a little bit, don't worry about it. That's super easy to fix. At the very end, we'll come back in and anywhere we might have run into that, we'll be able to fix it, okay? So do not worry if you run into that black some, it's totally fine, okay? I would much rather you run into the black than be so afraid to run into the black that you end up not going far enough out with this, okay? All right, so I'm gonna use my, um, actually you can use your big brush or your medium brush for this, whichever one you're most comfortable with. Um, I'm going to use, I'm gonna use my medium brush just cause I've got a little smaller area down here. So I'm gonna pick up a nice big scoop of orange, nice big scoop of white, and a scoop of red. Now the red scoop I'm, I'm doing is not quite as big as the orange and white. And I'm gonna mix that together two or three times, but I'm not gonna to mix it totally together. You get kind of this color right here. It's almost like a tropical drink color, uh, but we want it to look like it's a mixture between wine and the reflection you're getting from the sky, okay? So again, I mixed a scoop of white, a scoop of orange, and then a little scoop of red with my medium brush. You can use your big brush. You're using a bigger canvas, so you can absolutely use your big brush if you want. So mix the colors together. Then I want you to wipe the brush off a little bit because when you mix colors, um, when you mix your colors together, your brush just gets just totally full of paint like this. It's hard to paint with. So again, I'm gonna wipe my brush off a little bit here. And like I said, I'm using my medium brush. You can use your big brush here if you want. So I'm just gonna come in and I like to kind of outline first where I'm gonna be painting. And bear with me, this is a different camera setup than we've been using, so I'm kind of struggling here to paint without getting in the way. So I kind of like to outline up here a little bit first, and then I'm gonna come in, add this color. I'm gonna be blending a little bit of white in here just to lighten it up a little bit. And I'm also gonna blend a little bit of orange in there. Now later on, we're gonna come back in and put this yellow reflection, and that reflection is from, you guessed it, the moon, okay? So we'll put that back in, or we'll put that in later on. But for right now, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white, not much, add some white in here. Now later on again, we'll add that yellow. Notice how I'm kind of uh, going with the shape of the glass when I do this. So if you go with the shape of the glass like this, you get more of a 3D effect on that glass, okay? And I'm gonna add a little bit of orange in there as well. Now you could also add some red if you wanted instead of orange or in addition to orange. Just keep in mind that's a, kind of a small space so don't overdo it there. You don't wanna overdo your blending when you're dealing with a real small space. I'm gonna add a little bit more white up to the top area here just to kind of indicate that, you know, that's the top of the liquid on the inside. And then I'll just bring that color that we mixed right down into here. Just kind of bring that down all the way down into the bottom here. When we do our, um, the rest of our uh, shadow or reflection down here on the water, you may find that you run into the glass a little bit. Don't worry about that. You've got plenty of this color left over. You can always go back and touch it up if you need to. But again, don't worry about that. I am gonna show you here what a little bit of red would look like. I forgot to do that earlier. So if you wanted to mix a little red or blend a little red in, this is what the red would look like. I'm gonna show it to you like this, just so you can kind of get a better, better view of how that red would look blended into that, okay? And this, again, is a good time to hit pause if you need to catch up, which you do, I'm sure, and that's totally fine. So hit pause here, and then when you come back, we're going to start working in this area down here with our reflection, but we're gonna do so with some different colors than we had before. Um, so again, good time to hit pause here so that you can concentrate on doing that glass. Remember, when you're blending, less is more. Don't add too much color in there when you're blending. And keep in mind too, we're gonna come back in a minute and add some of that yellow and white color right down the center, just so it gives us the illusion that we're getting a little bit of that moonlight um, reflecting off of our wine glass here, okay? But again, good time to hit pause so that you can catch up to this point. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do after you've paused and finished that up, I'm gonna come in and do the exact same thing I did with this yellow and white mixture, but I'm gonna use the mixture we mixed before, which was that 
orange, red, and white. If you need to mix it again, it's a scoop of white, scoop of orange, and a little scoop of red, because that red can be really overpowering. You can use your big brush to mix, it's totally fine, but let's use our medium brush down here, just like we did before with this yellow, okay? All right, so again, I'm gonna hold this up so you can see it a little better here. I'm gonna take this brush and I'm gonna come in here real soft like this. Make sure you wipe the brush off so you don't have too much paint on it. Notice I'm letting some of that color kind of glide on into my yellow, okay? So now the color is kind of going into the yellow a little bit. So it looks like we've got a little reflection going on here and it looks a little more, um, it looks a little more natural down in this area. Uh, again, we don't want it to just be flat right here where you've got a squared off section of the orange and red and um, white color and the yellow and white color. We want it to be more, um, kind of more organic where it just looks like it's running into each other, okay? All right, and I'll come right in here with a little bit of this color too. Remember, it's totally fine. You still see some of the red, uh, black you still want to, so don't worry about that. I'll come over here and do the same thing. Just real soft. And again, you still want to see some of that black. So, there we go. You could also, if you wanted to, you could add some red in this area. You could even do the red kind of on top of that sum. It's totally up to you. This is what it would look like if you added a little bit of that red in there. I personally like the red in here just because it gives it a little more of a pop. So if you look at this side versus that side, got a little more of a pop on this side. Don't overdo it, guys. You don't want to add too much in there. And I'll do a tiny, tiny bit of red over here as well. And there we go. All right. So once again, good time to hit pause if you need to to work on this area down in here. Later on, we're gonna add a little bit of blue on this side and on that side. We're not gonna worry about that right now. Um, we're gonna actually gonna mix the blue color together in a few minutes. We're gonna mix it blue and white to make the color we're gonna use um, down in this area and also for an outline for our building. So if you look right here, this blue and white mixture that we're going to, to have uh, in just a few minutes. Actually, you could even do turquoise. I'll show you both ways, but for right now, though, let's just concentrate on doing the, you know, the reds and oranges uh, down in this area for our reflection, okay? And again, if you need to pause, please do so, and that'll give you time to, um, excuse me, it'll give you time to finish this area up, okay? Now, when you come back from pausing, take that medium brush, rinse it off, and dry it off. What I'm going to do next is the little bit of yellow on the wine glass, okay? So if you look here, you'll see that little bit of yellow on our wine glass. I'm gonna do that the same way that I did this area down in here. I don't wanna have too much paint on it, okay? So I'm gonna take my medium brush here, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this yellow and white mixture, not much. This is about half white, or excuse me, two thirds white, one third yellow pick up a little bit of that yellow mixture. I'm gonna dab it off on the table so I don't have too much there. And then I'm gonna come in here really, really softly and just hit it right down the middle here with a little bit of that yellow and white mixture, okay? And notice how I just let it kind of fade into the other colors on my wine glass. I didn't add too much. Add a little bit in here too. So again, just real soft and just kind of let it fade in there, okay? I'm looking now and I, when I did my, when I drew my wine glass, obviously I did not use a projector on mine like we do on the ones we do for you guys because my glass looks like, well, it looks like what a glass would look like if you've had a couple glasses too many. So it's kind of leaning here, but when we do the outlining later on, I will take care of that, okay? All right, so again, once again, if you need to pause to come in and do the yellow and white, go ahead and do so. You could even add a tiny bit of that yellow and white if you wanted to, kind of right down here. So it looks like, you know, you got a little bit of that glow coming down on the center, or right down the center of your stem of your wine glass, all right? But again, if you need to pause, now's a good time to do that, to give you time to do that yellow before we start our greenery. And by the way, when we do this greenery, don't worry if you run into the areas down in here, the reflection on the water. Don't worry if you run into that because in a few minutes when you do your outlining, it's not gonna matter at all, okay? All right, so again, pause if you need to. 
but if you don't, we're gonna go ahead and start working on our greenery here. So I'm gonna take my medium brush. I'm gonna pick up two scoops of white. I say one scoop of white is plenty. We'll pick up one big scoop of white with our medium brush, two big scoops of yellow, and two big scoops of green. Put those together in a pile and mix, okay? So again, two big scoops of yellow, two big scoops of green, and one big scoop of white. So again, two yellow, two green, one white with your medium brush. You're gonna mix those colors together. You're gonna end up with a color something like this. And we're gonna paint this little area down here. Now, a lot of people get really concerned about their lines and they try to come in like this and perfectly go around that. Here's how I like to do um, the, the greenery, okay? And again, this is just trees and shrubbery or whatever. I like to take my brush, I like to lay my canvas flat, okay? And you can actually bear, you can actually brace your hand against the canvas here. Um, it makes it a lot easier to do this. Use your brush like you would a pen or a pencil, okay? Pick up some of that green there and just really softly go round and round like this, okay? And again, don't worry if you're running into the, um, the area down at the bottom, but again, just round and round and round like this. And you can come back in a minute and you can add a little bit of, just a tiny bit of white or a tiny bit of green on that to give yourself uh, just a little bit of light and shadow there so it's not all one color. But again, just round and round and round. I'm gonna flip this over to kind of show you what I'm talking about when I say that. So if this is my greenery here and I wanted to do this, I would just go round and round and round like this. Okay, just round and round and round. And we end up with something like this. Now, if you want to do any blending in this, you will need to do it while it's still wet. So I'm gonna show you that real quick, just in case you wanna do that. I'm gonna pick up a tiny, tiny bit of white on my medium brush. I'm gonna wipe it off on the paper a little bit so there's not too much. And then I'll come in while this is still wet and take a look at that, guys. Now we're getting a little bit of depth on this greenery by adding a little white to it. So notice this part versus that part. See how much more interesting the section on the left is than the, the section on the right? And that is because, again, we added just a tiny, tiny bit of white. Don't overdo it. Put the white on your brush, wipe it off on the table a little bit, and then come in and just go round and round like this while it's still wet. If you do it while it's still wet, you get some of this nice blending going on. The other thing you could do if you didn't want to do white, if you want to make it a little darker, you could do the green instead. So just pick up a little bit of green like this. So if you wanted to do both, you could, but I'm just showing you what the green does here. So take a look up here. If you're doing the white, just take a look up here and see what the green would look like in case you want to do that instead or in addition to the white, okay? And again, just gives you a, a, a lot more interesting look here. You don't end up with just flat. This black is real flat. Uh, it's supposed to be because it's a profile of the buildings, but we don't want everything else to be flat. So this gives our, um, our greenery down here just a little bit of depth to it. It makes it more interesting, okay? Once again, you can pause and catch up at this point if you need to. I'm going to keep going in just a second. And one of the reasons I'm doing that, I'm just going to be honest with you here, is because my phone battery is dying. And I'm actually having a video, that, video of this on my phone today. Um, so my phone battery is dying and I want to make sure I get through this before it does. So take a break or take a, you know, take a minute if you need to pause the video. And then when you come back in a second, we're going to do some of the blue down in this area. And I did tell you that I would show you how to make turquoise if you'd rather use the turquoise. So I will do that. So again, pause if you need to, to do your greenery. Remember, we mixed white, yellow, and green together to make the, the greenery down here. If you want it to be, um, if you want to have some little shadows in there, just add a little bit of green while it's still wet and blend. If you want to have some light areas, just add a little bit of white while it's still wet and blend that in too, okay? All right, and again, pause if you need to so that you can get to the point where um, you are ready to do this blue or turquoise, whichever you choose down in this area, and we'll do that together. So if you want to use blue, for your highlight on your buildings and for this area down here. Let's mix one scoop of white and one scoop of blue. You could do that with your medium brush. 
and you get this color right here, okay? So you get this color right here if you mix one scoop of white, one scoop of blue. If you want to use turquoise, you can mix a scoop of white, a scoop of blue, and a scoop of that dark green color you have, okay? So again, you could use white and blue to make that blue, that nice baby blue color. Or if you'd rather have turquoise, you could mix white, blue, and green, okay? Now this one has, and you've got a picture of this, you've got the blue on this one. I'm gonna use the turquoise because number one, I really like the turquoise. And number two, that way you can see the blue and the turquoise and see which one you like better, okay? So again, I mixed white, blue, and green to make my turquoise with my medium brush. I'm gonna wipe that brush off so that I don't have too much paint on it. And then I'm gonna come in here really softly, just real, real soft, and just like I did before, I'm gonna add just a little bit of this color in there. So this is the turquoise, okay? So this is that turquoise I just mixed. So you can see what that would look like. So here's the turquoise. And remember, I still wanna see some of the black down in this area. If you cover all the black up and you think it looks funny, then don't worry about that. Let it dry a few minutes, come back in with your medium brush using black paint and just do that real whispery, soft little um, strokes that I've been showing you with these colors, do that with black, okay? So if you need to pause to work on this area down here, you can. Don't forget to wrap that around the side. I think I've been forgetting to wrap stuff around the side here, but don't forget to wrap around the side. And once again, if you need to pause, do so. When you come back, the only thing we have left to do on this is our outlining. This is the difference your outlining is gonna make, okay? See how this one just looks like it's defined, it's got some of that nice definition around the buildings, around the wine glass. This one is kind of everything is just fading together, okay? So what we're gonna do next is our definition. Now, when we do definition, we outline. Whenever we say outline in class, people always hear trace, okay? We are not going to trace this. We're gonna do just enough outlining to give ourselves some definition, okay? So again, we are not going to trace this. We're gonna do just enough outlining to get some definition. This is one of those times that if you wanted to uh, lay your canvas flat on your table so that you can kind of use your brush like a pen or a pencil, it's a good idea. Um, but when you're doing this outlining, again, don't worry about trying to perfectly trace anything. What we want to do, and I'm just doing black here, what we want to do is just enough outlining to give us some definition, okay? You do not have to be exactly on the line. You could be a little on the inside of a line like this, okay? A little on the outside of a line like that. All you want is some definition, okay? And you don't have to go real, real thick with this. So I did some black around here, around my wine glass. Now, when I come back with my white and my turquoise in a couple of minutes, I'll be able to, if I went too far out or too far in with my outlining, this white that I'm about to use and the turquoise or the blue, if you wanted to use blue, what those are going to do, those colors, the, the additional colors we do for the, uh, um, for the outlining, those highlight our black. The black's the main outline color. We're gonna highlight with white and with either blue or turquoise, whichever one you chose. So when we highlight with these colors, it's going to kind of take away any of the issues you might've had with your black outlining, okay? Because that black outlining can get really thick sometimes. Um, if it does, you can outline really softly on top of it with white to kind of take away some of the thickness. Um, you can outline a little on the inside or the outside. For instance, if I wanted to make this wine glass look wider, I could outline on the outside like this a little bit with my white. And look, now it gives me the illusion that my glass is a little bigger, okay? So again, if you wanted to make it look bigger, you could outline on the outside. If you wanted to make your wine glass look smaller for whatever reason, you could outline on the inside. But who wants a smaller wine glass, right? All right, so I'm just doing a little bit of outlining there, just as a highlight more or less to the color I already have there, which is the 
uh, black outlining, okay? Now, on the buildings, you'll notice on the buildings, there's a tiny bit of white outlining, but not much. That's because white is a really stark color, especially when you've got it against the black, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is just go real soft. I'm not gonna do very much with the white here. And again, you can pause here if you need to while you finish up that wine glass. I'm just gonna do a little bit of white on my buildings. And again, not very much at all, as you'll see. Just a little bit. And like I said, all we're doing here is trying to get some definition, okay? So look what a big difference just that much outlining makes. So we've got our outlining around our wine glass, got some outlining here around our buildings. And take a look up here for just a second. I'm gonna put kind of a curvy line on the inside of my wine glass like this with white. And I'll do another one down in this area. What that's gonna do is just kind of make it look like that's a glass, okay? We're seeing just the curvature of the glass there. So take your time on that white, but go ahead and take a look as I do the turquoise here. Check out this turquoise. Look how cool this turquoise looks against that white, okay? So I'm gonna do more turquoise outlining or highlighting than I did white just because it's not as stark and it, I mean, it just looks really cool against that black. Um, again, you could either use the blue, blue and white mixture that we made earlier, or you could use this turquoise. If you need to make turquoise, remember turquoise is just white, blue, and that dark green color. Okay, all right, and guys, when you're done outlining those buildings, you are done with your painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, make sure you post a picture of your painting to our Facebook page, which is just Sips and Strokes um, Sandy Springs or Sips and Strokes Woodstock, wherever you picked up your canvases from, or Sips and Strokes Togo Hills. Um, you could also post to our Instagram pages. Look us up on Instagram. But we do um, about once a week or once every two weeks, we'll do a drawing and you can win a free class. Just a random drawing, but you can win a free class or a free kit if yours is chosen randomly um, when you post it to our Facebook or Instagram pages, okay? All right, so again, this is your finished product. You've got your nice outlining here. Look what a big difference that outlining makes. Um, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and that way you'll know. We're gonna be adding a lot more videos to that YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll know when we post new videos. Um, if there are images you'd like to see or videos you'd like to see on there, please hesitate, don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. You can contact us on our Facebook page. Um, you could also contact us, just go to the contact section on our website as well and just let us know which videos you would like to see. And thank you guys so much. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you post those pictures. Have a great day. Thanks.